Don't adjust your set. I promise you're not seeing things. This is indeed an iPad Pro being used as an external monitor. Whether you're looking to game on the go with either your PlayStation or Xbox, or yearning to streamline your video production workflow, I'll show you how to enable this feature on your iPad. So stick around. Before jumping into the details, I want to give a huge shout out to Wesley Hilliard, co-host of the Apple Insider podcast and a writer for Apple Insider. When I came across his article detailing this new feature, I was a bit skeptical for a number of reasons. Apple has historically obstructed these sort of features. This could easily be written off as some form of remote play trickery. And three, it just sounded too good to be true. Now, in order to get this working, you'll need the following items. One any 10th generation iPad, iPad mini, iPad Air, or iPad Pro, as long as it has a USB-C connection. Two, your iPad needs to be running iPad OS 17, which at the time of filming is still in beta. But by the time I upload this video, it will be available to everyone. Three, an HDMI converter slash capture card that turns your USB-C port into an HDMI input, allowing you to connect any external camera or video source to your iPad. And just in case you're wondering, these capture cards are extremely affordable, ranging around $10 to $20 on Amazon. Link in the comment section below. And for the free Orion HDMI monitor app available in the App Store or the Capture Pro UVC Viewer app that you can get by being an iOS beta tester and downloading it via TestFlight. When I recorded this episode two weeks ago, the only way to get your hands on the Capture Pro app was through TestFlight and the beta test program. But as I was putting the final editing touches on this episode, the developers of Capture Pro announced a partnership with Genki. So they will now be co-developing an app called Genki Studio, which you can download for free on the App Store. You're welcome. Regardless of which app you choose, both essentially allow your iPad to function as a dummy monitor, treating it like a regular TV screen with an HDMI input. Now that we have all the hardware and software gathered, we can start the setup process, which is super easy. One, connect the capture card dongle to the USB-C port on the iPad. For those that want to charge the iPad simultaneously, I suggest getting a hub capable of power delivery with two USB-C ports like this CalDigit USB-C Gen 2 SQHQ dock. Two, connect an HDMI cable from the game console or A10 mini to the dongle. Three, open the Orion or Capture Pro app on your iPad. And four, ensure your gaming console or A10 mini is plugged in and powered on. And voila, just like that, your iPad is now a fully functional monitor. But it doesn't stop there, since the Capture Pro app, and only the Capture Pro app, offers a plethora of features that make your iPad video production ready. For instance, we have the option to rotate the image in 90 degree increments, making it perfect for a teleprompter setup like I'm using right now. Planning on monitoring yourself during a Zoom call and need that mirroring feature? The Capture Pro app has your back, making sure you are always ready for your close-up. Corny, I know. Oh, and say goodbye to those ancient black bars on either side of your 4x3 content. Just hit stretch the fill. I'm not done. Another handy feature is the grid and aspect ratio overlay, which could be really useful in certain production settings. But one of the most important features of the Capture Pro app is the ability to capture video, which essentially allows you the ability to quickly record and share a take with a remote client. And how that right there is worth the price of entry. Now, I know there will be a ton of people in the audience that will ask, why would you want to use an iPad as your external display when you could easily purchase an inexpensive display and connect it to your computer and A10 Mini Pro via an HDMI switcher, allowing you the ability to flip back and forth between the PC and the multi-view? Well, the answer is simple. I like to keep my live stream package as minimal as possible. And in my opinion, using the iPad in this fashion strikes the perfect balance. I can read my script on the teleprompter, view my Twitch stream chat, and more importantly, see my A10 multi-view all in one place. No switching back and forth. Oh, and did I mention it's powered by the Apple M2 chip? Obviously, those watching that are only interested in gaming will have a ton of questions regarding 4K, 1440p, high dynamic range, VRR, 
and of course, high refresh rates. As you can see, both the Orion and Capture Pro app do not support a native 4K resolution or 1440p for that matter. They both top out at 1080p 60, which is still a tad disappointing since the 12-inch iPad Pro features a liquid Retina XDR display capable of displaying HDR content at 120 megahertz refresh rate. But I should mention that both the Orion and Capture Pro app aren't entirely responsible. There are hardware limitations, the most obvious being no model iPad supports native 4K resolution. And the dongle itself is the real bottleneck here, since it only supports an input resolution up to 4K at 30 hertz and an output resolution up to 1920 by 1080 at 60 hertz. Which ultimately means, yes, you can set your PlayStation or Xbox to output 4K at 30 frames per second, but just know that the dongle will downrest that signal to 1920 by 1080p at 60 hertz. So in my opinion, it's best to set your PlayStation or Xbox to 1080p at 60 frames a second. Now, for you diehard enthusiasts that want full 4K HDR 120 megahertz support, cross your fingers and hope someone puts out a higher fidelity dongle that supports those features and we get a true 4K iPad in the near future. Love it, hate it, let me know all about it in the comment section below. And more importantly, please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and bell so you're notified when I drop a new episode. Catch you guys next time.